It's really great to have everyone here. Welcome to Shine a Light. Hi, Senator. I'm Rabbi Noah Farkas, President and CEO of the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. And uh, actually, today marks my one year anniversary. I started at this event uh, last year. So it's really nice to be here with everyone. It's so beautiful to have such an overwhelming show of support for so many leaders across Los Angeles. I want to give a special thank you to all of our community organizations who've partnered with us today. There are so many, and I want to keep this program moving as quickly as possible. Uh, so I'm not going to mention them all, but they are in your program, and I want to thank you for being here. I also want to recognize our very special partnership with the Israeli Consulate in Los Angeles, and especially Deputy Consul General Amit Mikkel, whose presence here underscores our strong international support for our community. So thank you, Deputy Consul, for being here. Really happy that you are here with us. Today, yep. we will be welcoming in a few minutes a series of our wonderful elected officials and our civic partners, and I want to thank all of them for being here. Um, today, we are approaching the holiday of Hanukkah, we gather as a community to shine a light on anti-Semitism and all forms of hate. As many of you know, the past several weeks have proven that much needs to be done to fight the rise of anti-Semitism across America and here in Los Angeles. As a federation who's responsible for the Jewish community, we all need to understand that this, what this moment is and how we are uniquely positioned to respond to it. The global rise in anti-Semitism with Shine a Light's mission is to stand up to the harmful prejudices and stereotypes against the Jewish community, which is critical to do this now more than ever. Statistics, of course, highlight our concerns. One in every four American Jews in the United States have been targeted by anti-Semitism in the past year. Locally, the data is equally staggering. The 2021 LA County Hate Crime Report reveals of all religious hate crimes, 74% were anti-Jewish. So the question becomes, how do we confront this moment? If Hanukkah teaches us anything, the word Hanukkah itself means dedication. It is based on the story of when Jews stood up to anti-Semitism, oppression, and dispossession, and uh, completed a rebellion, reestablishing our hegemony in our indigenous homeland in Israel. And in that time, they needed to rededicate the temple. The word Hanukkah means dedication. It is ba the basis of this very public holiday is the dedication of the temple itself. And we stand here on the cusp of Hanukkah, I hope and I pray to rededicate ourselves to building a city full of love and life, a fellowship, and that we understand that a true redemption as a city will only come when we realize that there's more that unites us than what divides us. Today we'll shine a light to respond in solidarity to the dramatic rise in anti-Semitism, in racism, and all other forms of hate, because only in one positive voice are we truly all stronger. In Shine a Light, this campaign aligns with our Jewish campaign of infinite light, which is the Jewish Federation's annual citywide celebration of Hanukkah, created by our young adult initiative, New Roots. It's a curated and collaborative festival, creative Jewish gatherings, resources, and daily candle lighting. In your programs, you'll find a QR code if you'd like to learn more about infinite light. And throughout today's event, take lots of pictures and help elevate the hashtag shine a light. The poster is around here, you can look, you can even take some of these lawn signs home with you, put them out front to show your solidarity with the Jewish community, your pride in being Jewish if you are, and to shine a light on anti-Semitism and to create a world that is for love, justice, kindness, compassion, allyship, and community. It's my pleasure now to call on Rabbi Cohen, Father Alexei, and Aziza Hassan for our interfaith partners to say an uh, invocation. Good morning, everyone. I love being Jewish. 
Woohoo, yes. I love the feeling of connection. I love my community. I love the taste of being Jewish, the smell of Jewish spaces, bustling kitchens on a Friday afternoon, libraries filled with sacred texts, sanctuaries of all kinds. I love the rituals. I love the celebrations and the holidays, nearly all of which share a similar theme. Triumph over our enemies, dedication to our heritage, and a sustained commitment to Jewish tradition in spite of extraordinary obstacles. I love being Jewish, and it breaks my heart to witness the words and actions of those filled with hate and indifference and intolerance or whatever it is that motivates a person's resentment towards the other, toward me, toward my congregants, toward our people. The story of Hanukkah shares a well-worn trope. It's a tale of those in power rejecting the gorgeous diversity of a broader community, creating unjust boundaries around what is or is not holy. It's a tale of our ancestors pushing back against hate, a story of resilience and hope, finding our light in the darkest of times. And just as the Hanukkah glows brighter with each passing night, each additional candle illuminating yet another day of miracles, so too do we commit to increasing the light at the darkest, coldest time of year. In joining together today for this inspiring gathering of leaders and thinkers, clergy and allies, friends and acquaintances, together we increase the light. Together we signal to one another, I've got your back. Together we commit to increasing our collective light through partnership and empathy, creativity and collaboration, understanding, education, and love. The sages teach us that the world is not yet complete. It is still evolving and growing and untangling itself from the brilliant spark of creation. As humans, we work together every single day to build a world upon a foundation of love to foster circles and build neighborhoods and establish cities of love, to form alliances and partnerships of love, to support one another through acts of love. Hanukkah is often called the festival of lights, but this year, in the shadow of so much hate, I believe it's also appropriate to call it a festival of love. There is a prayer that we hold close to our hearts at Temple Isaiah in West Los Angeles. Anybody in the house from West LA? Or Isaiah? Yes, I see you. Olam chesed yibane, which translates as we will build a world from love. Together, our collective love and light shine brighter, reach higher, and build bigger than any one of us alone. So we're gonna sing. I hope you warmed up your voices on the way over here. And if you don't know it, it's a pretty easy melody to sing along to. And if you do know it, please sing along. It goes like this. Olam chesed yibane Yalla lai 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 Yalla lai lai Olam chesed yibane Yalla lai 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 Yalla lai lai Olam chesed yibane Yalla lai 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 Yalla lai lai Olam chesed yibane Yalla lai 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 Yalla lai lai I will build I will build this world from love Yalla lai lai lai, yalla lai lai. And you must build, you must build this world from love. Yalla lai lai lai, yalla lai lai. And if we build, and if we build this world from love, yalla lai lai lai, yalla lai lai, then God will build. Then God will build this world from love. Yalla lai lai lai, yalla lai lai. Olam chesed yibane. 
Ya la 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 Ya la 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 Happy Hanukkah. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I invite you now all to pray with me. By what name shall I call upon you who are beyond all names? What hymn can sing your praise? What word tell of you? The longings of the universe, the groanings of creation, are turned towards you in silent prayer. All who know how to interpret the world you have created sing to you a hymn of praise. All that subsists you uphold, all that moves you draw. You are the goal of all that is, you are one, O God. We thank you for your presence during these dark days of anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, harassment and violence directed toward a multiple of minority communities, for we know we have you to lean upon. In the words of Maya Angelou, for those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to pour your love out in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, we ask you to keep them company. For those who are depressed, we ask that you shower upon them the light of hope. O oh God, make us all as waves of the sea, as flowers of a garden, united through the bounties of your love. Open our hearts to the signs of your oneness and make all humankind stars brightly shining from the same height of glory as peaceful fruit growing upon the tree of life. The diversity in our human family, O God, should be the cause of love and harmony as it is in music where different notes blend together in making a perfect chord. May we in Los Angeles Sound that perfect chord, this door, this day, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning, friends. My name is Aziza Hassan. I lead a Muslim Jewish organization, and we believe that we need to be there for each other. And right now, I'm going to ask you to join me in prayer, whatever your tradition. Join me in a way that you pray that is meaningful to you. Lord of the worlds, Lord of the heavens and the earths and everything in between, it is scary and it is lonely in the darkness. We are afraid and we want to protect those that we love from rising hate. It's so hard to find kindness that we long for. Please God, be our sustainer in these times. Help us put our trust in you and cultivate your light from within each one of us so that we can remember that we're not alone. Help us feel the warmth of your light within us. Remind us, as Rumi says, that when we light the candle of another, it doesn't diminish our own light. Help us fill the space together with compassion so that our light neither dwindles nor glares so harshly that others are obscured. Help us be there for each other and listen deeply instead of trying to control one another and choose who deserves to shine. Help us appreciate the light of others around us, which help us to see more clarity and reveal what hides in the darkness so that we do not dim the light of another or cast doubt on others, what others need to show us. As the Quran says, where we harness our own light and truth even when we have to look at ourselves. And, and remind us, as Hillel proposed, that we add light to light so that we may increase in holiness. Help us add our lights to one another so that we may see even in the darkest part of the year. Help us move into the community of belonging, an LA for all, where we have one another's backs with greater understanding and clarity as we navigate the darkness together. Guide us to your light shining forth from within us and from within each other. When we add our collective light together, we can light up the sky on the darkest of nights. Amen, amen, amen. To begin our candle lighting, we are so honored 
to have our newly elected mayor, Karen Bass, with us today to commemorate our efforts to shine a light. The Shamash is the leader candle. It's used to kindle the light of the other candles, and in a certain sense, Mayor Bass, you are our Shamash. Through your actions, we hope and pray that you will bring light to our city, that you will add one light to the other, that you will bring us to a place where we can heal, we can grow for a more just, more equitable, and more sustainable future. Now I'd like to present to you our 43rd mayor of Los Angeles, the first woman to run this city, the second African-American to be elected as the city's chief executive, ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Karen Bass. Good morning, everyone. It is definitely my pleasure and my honor to be here with you today. And Rabbi Farkas, everything that you said in terms of how you would like to see the city is rooted in my DNA. Uh, I absolutely am committed to healing the city, to bringing the city together, and lifting up all of the beauty and wonder that Los Angeles has. So I want to thank the sponsoring organizations for the work that you do day in and day out. Hannah Kay and Randy Grossman for your generosity in sharing their time here with us today and their courage to share their stories. Each one of my elected colleagues, I am so excited about working with you and we have already started our work and I think that there is so much we can do with our leader, Paul Krikorian, the president of the city council and the chairwoman of the board of supervisors, Janice Hahn. I think we're off to a good start. So today is day four, <laughs> day four of my first week of serving as mayor, and I am so happy to be starting my fourth morning right here in a celebration of Hanukkah. I am blessed to stand with so many Jewish leaders and friends as families around the world prepare to celebrate Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. As the days continue to grow shorter this time of the year, the Hanukkah season and the ritual of lighting candles always brings us back to the light, to the warmth of holiday family gatherings, and to community celebrations like this one. I grew up in the Jewish community in the Fairfax district, and I cherish those deep connections that go all the way back to my childhood. I've seen both the beauty of sharing faith traditions and the problems that come when people demonize each other for what they believe in. In particular, the 2017 marches in Charlottesville, Virginia, marked a turning point in this country. Blatant chants, which I will not repeat, were a painful awakening to the arming, alarming level of anti-Semitism in our country and its centrality to white nationalism. In a few moments, we will hear from two special guests from POE who have lived experience of what happens when hateful rhetoric takes hold and turns into deadly terrorism. It should be unthinkable to attack a place of worship, and yet it is becoming all too common. I recall the massacre in Pittsburgh. Just last week, the Los Angeles County Commission on Human Relations released its 2021 hate crime report, noting that the number of reported hate crimes rose to the highest level since 2002. And I think this is so important because we think in Los Angeles, liberal Los Angeles, this is unthinkable. Obviously, it is not. Earlier this year, the Anti-Defamation League reported that anti-Semitic anti attacks had reached an all-time high in our country. This is completely unacceptable. As I have done repeatedly throughout my life, I continue to pledge to work tirelessly to combat anti-Semitism, especially in our city of angels. For all of that darkness, Hanukkah brings us back to the light. Celebrations like this one show how much we can accomplish when we come together with open hearts. I see not only Jewish friends, but those of other faiths and from other communities working to build a city where we can all belong and all feel safe. I also hope that you will join me in remembering that our unhoused neighbors sleeping right near here to feel safe and that you work with me in Los Angeles so that everyone has a place to call home and a place of safety. As we Thank you. 
And when I think of what we need to accomplish in the city, all of us coming together to work for those who, have, who, those who are the least of us, for those who are sleeping on the streets, that we use that as a focal point to show the goodness in our city and how we can all come together and lock arms, like we talked about a couple of days ago, and make this happen. So as we approach the start of Hanukkah on Sunday, which kicks off the whole holiday season this year, I hope that all of Los Angeles will join me in seeking to build a city filled with love, acceptance, belonging, and community where neighbors come out for one another and strangers help each other out. Thank you and happy Hanukkah. Mayor Bass, thank you so much for your beautiful words of hope for our city. We truly look forward to being a partner with you as we can help extend the light across Los Angeles. I'm Joanna Mendelson, the Senior Vice President of Community Engagement for the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. And I have the honor of calling up two beautiful souls whose lives were forever shattered by the actions of someone deeply motivated by hate and anti-Semitism. Hannah Kay and her aunt Randy Grossman lost their mom and sister respectively at the hands of a white supremacist. They know far too well the impact of hate. The attack at the Poway Synagogue that Shabbat morning resulted in the murder of Lori Gilbert Kay, sending reverberations across the nation. Today, Hannah and Randy's presence reminds us what it is at stake right here in California there are painfully real consequences if we do not respond in a unified and mobilized and mobilize our voice to affect change. Hannah Kay and Randy Grossman. On April 27, 2019, a gunman armed with an assault rifle ambushed a synagogue in Poway, California where my father, mother, and I were present. My mother, Lori Kay, was shot and murdered, and both my father and I, as well as other survivors of the synagogue, all witnessed the aftermath of her assassination. On the day my mother was murdered, a big piece of my heart and spirit died inside, and the act of the shooting obliterated any sense of safety and indeed was a part of a shattering in community. My beloved sister, Lori, demonstrated the very best of humanity she lived her life giving and doing for others, performing acts of kindness and loving support to those in need, to her individual family and friends in her own community, and to people and communities around the world. My mother, Lori, who lived a life of kindness, compassion, and generosity, who loved all people from all religions, races, and cultures, was murdered because she was a Jew. Devastatingly, we have become part of a, a nationwide network of other survivors and victims holding and supporting one another, survivors and their families in Poway, Pittsburgh, Buffalo and beyond. How we choose to harness our pain, our sense of soul annihilating and deep profound loss, and the commitment we made to my mom, Lori Kay, to have her memory be a blessing and to live a life of service in honor of her legacy propels us to action. This is not a moment to become immune and desensitized to what exists all around us, to normalize these ancient hatred bearings, bearing their wrath, to become desensitized to its insidious power and influence. This is a moment where we must draw strength and knowledge from one another for we are all in this together. The gunman who murdered my sister in her synagogue for being a Jew just a few weeks earlier committed arson and attempted to harm the Muslim community at their mosque. This is a moment for all of us to respond in a unified voice rooted in strength and peace, to come together to address today's threats of hate and violence. Answering the call to this urgent and piercing moment certainly won't be easy, but it is the most important, sacred, and essential work most of us will ever undertake in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you. They deserve a round of applause for their bravery of being here today, for sure. 
Thank you so much. And they deserve to be honored with our admi admiration and our prayers of healing. But most of all, let us give them a sense of hope in our collective ability to harness the good in people and to help shine a light. So now it is my privilege to call to the stage today our MC, actress, producer, writer, and Emmy Award winner, Rachel Bloom. Hello. Um, I'd once again love to thank Hannah and Randy for speaking. That was um, incredibly impactful. Um, so I'm Rachel Bloom. Hi. I am a, a proud Jewish woman. Uh, I'm a native Angelino, and I am a very proud supporter of Shine a Light. Um, as you know, uh, sadly, we've recently seen celebrities who could use their platform for good instead choose to elevate conspiratorial views, disinformation, and anti-Semitic tropes that have been around for thousands of years. Um, I was especially struck by the recent remarks of a well-known comedian who jokingly, but not jokingly, referred to us all as a collective they. <clears throat> we are a they. A they hell-bent on taking away power and prestige and sneaker deals from anyone who offends them. Now we all know that there is no collective they. Jewish people are not a monolith. We come from all different countries. We come from all different socioeconomic backgrounds, different political views. But if there's one thing I think all Jews do have in common, it's that we are scared right now. Or to put it in the comedian's words, they are scared. This is a moment that tests us all, and I think we must forcefully respond. And so many great leaders throughout our community are gathered here today in solidarity and in strength. Their leadership values and actions represent their commitment to shine a light. Our elected civic and community leaders will now come up to light a symbolic candle to celebrate our shared values. Uh, the first candle today is that of remembrance. Mark Twain famously said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. How can we draw lessons from both our deep history and unfortunately recent events to help us forge a different path? Lighting the first candle, we call upon state senators Ben Allen and Henry Stern. And as they come up, we would also like to acknowledge Ben Nate with the Office of Community Awareness, Response, and Engagement under California Attorney General Rob Bonta and thank them both for their support. Unfortunately, Senator Stern wasn't able to make it today. I'm Senator Ben Allen. I was asked to speak to remembrance. And this is a, a moment to reflect on the dark and difficult history of the Jewish people going all the way back to the persecutions of ancient Egypt, to the persecutions, the repression of Judaism that we commemorate with the Hanukkah story, through to the Crusades, the pogroms, the Shoah, the Holocaust, and then the dark moments that we've reflected on today in Pittsburgh and Poway. One of our teachers uh, during a time that was more difficult than this. People are afraid now. People are afraid to wear a kippah. People are afraid to put a mezuzah on their door. People are afraid to go to the synagogue. People are afraid to walk around uh, openly Jewish. And yet we know that our people have been through more difficult times. And during a very dark time in our history, a famous rabbi, Rabbi Nachman of Braslav, wrote, Kol ha'olam kulo, gesher tzar me'od, the world is a very narrow bridge, but the important thing is to not be afraid. And so I hope that we, even if we are afraid, that we take some inspiration from those who have faced difficult, difficult moments in the past when worlds were being destroyed, when Cossacks were coming down from the hills and burning shtetls and villages when modern technology was put to use to annihilate a people to commit genocide, that our people through each of these moments 
were resilient. They, they, they fought to pass on their values and their heritage, Lador Vador, to the next generation. And they doubled down on love. And that's what I ask us to do today. Let's double down on love. Let's focus on what is good in, human, in our fellow man and woman. And let's double down on love this Hanukkah. Thank you. Thank you. The rise in anti-Semitism is happening while other vulnerable communities are also being targeted with increased threats and violence directed at minority communities, you know, whether LGBTQ+, African American, AAPI, Latino, Muslim, and others. So we must find ways to strengthen the racial, ethnic, and religious connections in our community and stand together. Lighting the second candle, which will represent bridge building, we call upon assembly member and Jewish caucus chair, Jesse Gabriel, and assembly member, Isaac Bryan. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor to be here with my brother and friend, assembly member, Jesse Gabriel. It's fitting that we're chosen to do the building bridges as we got back from Israel, my first trip this year. It's been a pretty powerful, pretty powerful year. We've seen hate in all of its forms, haven't we? Anti-blackness, the denigration of indigenous communities, the exclusion of LGBTQ plus communities, and yes, a rise in anti-Semitism. We've been saying that all year. It seems like every year we're reporting the rise, and then we see another escalation, and then we see another escalation, and then we see another act of violence. And it's a reminder that we have a lot of work to do, and no community can do it alone. This is a festival of light. It's a festival of love, but it's a moment of clear solidarity building. And I'm grateful and I'm excited about our new mayor because I know she means what she says. And to my Jewish brothers and sisters, know that I stand with you and that we stand together and that when we stand together, we're gonna root out hate and we're gonna build the kind of city and the community that we all deserve. Good morning, everybody. It's an honor to be here. Jesse Gabriel, uh, chair of the Jewish Caucus, also representing the San Fernando Valley. I know we have some folks from the Valley here. Uh, it is such an honor to be with Rabbi Farkas and so many leaders in the Jewish community, so many esteemed colleagues in public service, uh, particularly our new mayor, who gives us so much hope for a brighter future. So we are so excited about you. Uh, and of course, my friend and my colleague and my brother, Isaac Bryan, who has been an incredible leader for our state and an incredible loyal ally to our Jewish community. So the second candle today is the spirit of bridge building. And I will share with you a story just to connect the dots. For me, the most powerful moments that I've had in the legislature are the moments of allyship between our diversity caucuses, our Jewish caucus, our black, Latino, API, LGBTQ women's caucuses, when we have come together. And for me, the most powerful moment that I've had in the legislature is two days after Lori Kay was shot. And we just had the chance to hear from her beautiful daughter and sister. After that terrible shooting at the Chabad in Poway, we came up on Monday to go into session. And that was actually happened to be Holocaust Memorial Day, where we were bringing Holocaust survivors up to the Capitol. And so we were thinking about violence against Jews then and violence against Jews now. And we decided to call a press conference at the urging of Senator Allen and, and Senator Stern to call on the state to stand with our community and to fund all communities that are at risk of hate-motivated violence. And the leadership of every single ethnic caucus came and stood with the Jewish community. Because that's the kind of bridge building that we strive to do in the legislature every single day. And we in the Jewish community have been so proud to stand with our sister caucuses to support them not only when they have faced acts of hate and bigotry and discrimination, but also to try to advance the kind of progressive public policies that are going to build a state that is more inclusive, more just, and more equitable, that honors all of our diverse communities. So we are comforted by the allyship that we receive, and we are also proud to stand with others. And that type of allyship is so important because that's how we defeat hate whether it's anti-Semitism, anti-blackness, bigotry against the trans community, immigrants, the API community, or anyone else, because love and solidarity and unity are the opposite of hate and bigotry. So as we build these bridges, we give strength and life to what Dr. King called that inescapable network of mutuality. And we are proud to do that. This is a beautiful holiday to do that bridge building. We are so grateful 
to Mr. Bryan, to our mayor, to all of the elected officials from diverse communities that have come to stand with the Jewish community, together, together we will build a better future for all of our kids. And that is the bridge building we hope to do. Thank you. Happy Hanukkah. I will not hold for sound. I will continue. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, it's part of the city. As, um, as we stand just outside City Hall, we understand the critical role that our elected leaders play in helping to shape our city. So lighting the third candle, we call upon Los Angeles County Supervisors Janice Hahn, Hilda Solis, Holly Mitchell, Lindsay Horvath, and Catherine Barger to address the role of leadership. In the spirit of bridge building, I would like to start by acknowledging the first peoples of this unceded land which we currently occupy. And with respect to their elders, past and present, we recognize the Chumash, the Quiche, the Serrano, the Tataviam, and the Tongva as the original stewards of this land, air, and water. And we provide our support as they continue to lift up their stories and cultures. My colleagues and I on the Board of Supervisors were asked to speak about the power of leadership. And I am so proud to be the chair of this board with these four great women leaders. When we talk about leadership, we cannot underestimate the power of leading by example. This is a board that leads with heart, that leads with tolerance, that leads with understanding. This is a board that is invested in the LA versus hate initiative to empower communities across the county to combat hate. But leadership goes far beyond the people who are elected to public service. So many people in LA County have platforms, whether they are celebrities with millions of followers or people who are looked up to in their own communities. We have seen how that power can be abused. Just days after a celebrity tweeted anti-Semitic hate in October, we saw right here in Los Angeles a banner attacking Jews hung on the 405 freeway. Those of you who are influencers, you can either use your influence for good and light or you can spread dark. Please be aware of the words that you say matter. But as much power as each of us has to spread hate, we have just as much power to combat it and spread love. We have to stop hate wherever it crops up and that means each of us has a responsibility to not only call it out when we see it, but actively work to be an example of love and tolerance. And now I'd like to introduce mi amiga, Supervisor Hilda Solis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, buenos dias to everybody and good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to join the Jewish Federation of Los Angeles and thank you uh, in, sin in sincere uh, memory of all those individuals that we have lost during the pandemic uh, because they also are people that had suffered and maybe were faced with bigotry and discrimination. Um, today though we're shining a light and that's what this event is about to bring us all together and to also think about the rise in hate that we have seen uh, demonstrated over the last three years. Um, we need to take ownership and leadership our leaders, civic, as well as our community advocates have to do whatever they can to speak out and to stop that ugliness and violence. That's not how we were taught. That's not our values. And we heard that loud and clear from many of our, of our uh, leaders that have already spoken. I'm also delighted to join with my colleagues here and our new incoming mayor who gives us hope and shines a light on all all the residents of the city and the county of Los Angeles. We are so blessed to have you here with us, Karen Bass, our friend, our amiga, but also for our AAPI community, which I happen to represent the largest segment in my district. They, from the forefront before the pandemic started, were the ones that were viciously attacked. And because of that, we brought out this initiative, an initiative that I put forward to help provide assistance to combat hate, LA hate, against all groups, women, female, gender-based, language-based, uh, poverty-based, all of those things that impact all of us, and especially the Jewish community, the African-American community, Latinx, as well as LGBTQ, and everybody. So no one is lost here, and especially the undocumented people. 
that have also, and refugees that come here that look for a safe haven. They're also looking for light and leadership. So let us pray for them as well. And let's move together in this season of Hanukkah and holiday spirit. Muchísimas gracias y que les vaya bien. Saludos a todos and happy Hanukkah. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Lindsay Horvath, most newly elected to District 3, serving a richly vibrant and diverse uh, Jewish community throughout our district and throughout Los Angeles County. It is an honor to be here with you this morning. Um, when we talk about leadership, it, it surfaces in, a, in many different forms. For me, servant leadership is where I am called. And servant leadership looks like lifting up those who often are not like us, but who need their voices amplified, who need their stories listened to, and who need solidarity and allyship in times of great darkness. And so as a servant leader, I strive to educate myself about the people who are different from me, whom I am supposed to serve. And understanding the generations of darkness that have plagued our Jewish communities, understanding what darkness has looked like over many generations, uh, combined with the darkness that we see today and the anti-Semitism uh, can feel very heavy. And it, and it makes us all sad, it makes us all um, uh, weep, but it also makes us unified in this struggle in this particular moment. And so we find light in looking forward in our future generations and in the work that we will do together sharing in this struggle to bring light to all of our communities and to take this time of Hanukkah and beyond to light up the lives of each other, to be of service to each other, to listen to one another, to understand one another, and to do better as we all work together to light up Los Angeles. It is now my honor to welcome Supervisor Mitchell. Good morning and happy Hanukkah. Rabbi Cohen, I loved her message when she declared she was proud to be a Jewish woman. And what that reminded me when I think about cultural humility is her pride in her own religion and cultural values and mores doesn't diminish my pride in mine. I was also reminded of my years um, before elected office when I worked with little kids as the CEO of Crystal Stairs, and we learn a lot from children. And what I learned is that bigotry and hate and violence are not innate characteristics or attributes. They are learned behaviors. And so while we are here to talk about leadership, I want to talk about leadership at a very different le level, leadership in our own homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the responsibility we have to set a living example for the young and old around us about how we choose to honor and respect people who are different from us. And so I would ask that during Hanukkah, during Kwanzaa, during the holiday celebration, when we all gather, that we have those conversations about what love looks like, how we can manifest love and light, not only among your civic leaders, but in our individual homes. Because when I stand with you unconditionally, without question, and you stand with me unconditionally and without question, that is how we practice actively and manifest love in our communities. Happy Hanukkah. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the representative from the 5th Supervisorial District, Supervisor Catherine Barger. Thank you. What powerful words, um, Supervisor Mitchell. And I love saying, Mayor Bass, <laughs> you give us all hope. You give us all hope. Thank you. As we prepare to begin the first days of Hanukkah, I would like to thank the Jewish Federation for organizing this truly meaningful event. One of the central Hanukkah traditions is lighting the menorah each night and praying a special blessing. While lighting the third candle, today's prayer invites us to remember the power and the beauty of bringing light to the darkest moments. And we've heard stories of the darkest moments. Let's take that invitation to shine light for justice. During the Festival of Lights, I offer a prayer to encourage our community leaders to combat anti-Semitism and promote love 
and promote acceptance. We must stand up, speak out, and shine a light against all, all forms of hate. To all our residents across LA County, remember that you have the power to be a light too. I encourage you to do your part to advocate and raise awareness in your community. And I think each one of my colleagues has highlighted ways that that can be done. We are strongest when we encourage and uplift one another. Stop tearing down, but build up. As Hanukkah reminds us each year, hope truly is enduring. May we all continue to hold on to the hope that there will be a light, and I'm confident there will, awaiting us tomorrow. Thank you. And now we, on, the, on behalf of the 10 million residents of Los Angeles County, uh, the five of us would like to uh, present a commendation to the Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles. Uh, and thank you for this event, and thank you for your dedicated service. Wow, can I just say, it means a lot to me as a Jewish person to be here today, but also as a woman. What well, we can <laughs> Our leaders are so amazing. Uh, and I'm so happy to be here. I'm going to do something very uncharacteristic, and now quote from the Bible. <clears throat> Get ready. Justice. Justice, you sell. Nope, I messed it up. <laughs> That's how little I quote the Bible. <clears throat> Justice. Justice, you shall pursue. Deuteronomy 1620. Thank you very much. How? How can we work to address systemic racism, injustice, and inequality? How can we combat the bigotry, racism, and discrimination that impacts our marginalized communities? Lighting the fourth candle, symbolizing justice, we call upon our newly elected city attorney, Heidi Feldstein Soto. Good morning y buenos dias. I light a candle for justice, which to me is the rule of law and that which is right, replacing the rule of physical strength and that which is might. Justice in Hebrew is tzedek. It's doing what is right, not just for ourselves, but for all of our community. Justice to me is a three-legged stool. The first is judgment, and it is my job and that of my office as chief prosecutor for the city of Los Angeles to make tough calls, to make judgments, to enforce the laws that our policymakers have passed in a way that is fair and treats everyone the same under the law. It is justice with compassion tempered by a view toward restoration and rehabilitation. It is justice with the aim of tikkun olam, with the aim of repairing our world for all. That is the ultimate good and just result. The LAPD reported that hate crimes are up 13% this year over last, and last year's were at a record high. This only seems to be getting worse. Anti-Semitism is on the rise in ways that are unprecedented in my memory. The crimes against our LGBTQ plus community have been rising and crimes targeting our African American community have jumped by 36%. The hate crimes against our AAPI community have continued to rise and I refuse to accept that increase as inevitable. It's not. It is our obligation as we go forth in the world, at our homes, at our workplaces, in our public areas, to repair the world, to speak up when we see wrong, to speak up against hatred, and to protect all of our communities so that we have a city that works for all. I have incredible hope and faith in our leaders. It is such a joy to see the leaders gathered here today to thank our mayor, to thank our leaders from Sacramento and to thank our city leaders for coming together and giving us the tools so that my office can do its work. And so to all of you, I wish you a very happy Hanukkah, 
a safe and prosperous holiday season, whatever holiday you may celebrate. And I celebrate us all in our diversity, our inclusion, and our love for our city. Thank you. Um, in addition to our elected officials and community leaders, I would like to acknowledge the seemingly newborn puppy over there who is taking a lot of attention. Uh, what is the puppy's name? Love? The puppy's name is Love. Well, that's on brand. Um, so I, uh, lighting the fifth candle is the puppy, no. Um, go over and see Love uh, if you have a chance. Um, lighting the fifth candle symbolizing the need for our community to care and love one another, we call upon Los Angeles City Council members, Bob Lumenfield, Tim McOsker, Nithya Roman, Hugo Soto Martinez, and Katie Yaroslavsky. It's pretty tough to follow a puppy named Love, uh, but I'm Council President Paul Krikorian, and I want to wish everyone uh, a good morning and a happy Hanukkah. Uh, at a time when our nation is ripped apart by toxicity, uh, at a time when so-called leaders stoke division among people and among communities, uh, at a time when gun violence is too often accepted as the new normal, at a time when social media opens the floodgates to every f form of vile hatred and bigotry at a time when California has experienced a 30 percent increase in hate crimes against Jews just since COVID began at a time when Los Angeles has heard the voices of hatred and bigotry and division even from leaders who work in Los Angeles City Hall at a time like that, it's easy for us to lose our confidence in the future. But Hanukkah is, at its essence, a celebration of audacious optimism and hope even when hope seems irrational. And I feel that ho optimism and that kind of hope right now in Los Angeles, where we are at, as Mayor Bass has said, a point of inflection in this city. Uh, we have a choice of paths to take, um, and the inspiration of the Hanukkah story should guide us and inspire us in that regard. As long as we do the work to love even those who disagree with us, to respect people who have views that are different from ours, to unite and link arms, Mayor Bass, in common purpose, and to join together to lift up our brothers and sisters in this city, uh, even uh, and especially those who are in most need of our assistance, to lift them up uh, and, and, and give them strength, then we will be able to really um, move forward as a city and fight against the hatred, the tides of hatred and bigotry and division. And I'm so proud that we're doing that in Los Angeles City Hall now with our brand new mayor, with a brand new city council that truly reflects the great diversity of this city, diversity of uh, geography, diversity of ethnicity, diversity of faith, diversity of viewpoints. That is the city council of Los Angeles now, and I'm so proud to serve with each and every one of these great members who are before us, and I'd like to invite Bob Blumenfield to come up, come up and speak next. Thank you, Council President. I'm proud to say that. Uh, Listen, I, I will try to be brief. Uh, even though the oil and the candle lasted eight long days, we don't want my speech to last eight long days because there's a lot of folks to come as well. But, you know, we have been racked with, with hatred this year. People have talked about it, but certainly on the city council. Uh, and we are determined to get past that and to, we know that love trumps hate. And we know that getting together here as a community, we will move forward. And I'm very optimistic for this year. Uh, looking forward to celebrating Hanukkah with all of you, but celebrating Hanukkah as as the start of of something new where we are all together. And I will stop there and just say thank you, Hak Sameam. And I will turn it over to Nithya Raman. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here to mark this moment with all of you. You know, I, I really love Los Angeles. I feel so humbled and blessed to be a representative for this city. 
And I really believe that even though there has been an alarming rise in hatred, those voices, especially in this incredible city, are in the extreme minority. And my commitment to all of you today is to continue to work to be a builder of bridges between those who have already spoken up on these issues and so many out there who I know want to stand with the Jewish community. I want to make sure that I commit to all of you today that in this moment of fear, of anxiety, I will do the work to ensure that the Jewish community never stands alone. Thank you. And I'd like to invite my new colleague, Katie Yaroslavsky, to the stage. Good morning, everyone. I have notes because I'm still new. This is day four. Um, I'm honored to be here as the new councilwoman for Los Angeles Council District 5. As a proud Jew, it's an honor to represent the largest population of Jewish Angelinos in the city. And I'm honored to be here not just as a representative of a district that I've known my whole life, one that encompasses many diverse communities, but also because I'm standing alongside so many new voices as we take on the challenges confronting our city. I want to go back to something Supervisor Mitchell said about how hate and racism isn't innate. I was walking my seven-year-old to school on Wednesday, and he asked me how my first council meeting was, uh, which we went down a rabbit hole. Eventually, I'm defining racism for him. And he looks at me and says, Mom, that is so dumb. Racism is stupid. And he's right. Um, and yet, recent events remind us that the stain of anti-Semitism, racism, and bigotry continues to permeate all of our communities, that the fight to live in a free world a world free of hate is one we have to take a head on every day with intentionality. And that the only way forward is by leading with love, by showing up and showing care for someone who might not look like you, someone you might not know, by building coalitions between our communities that recognizes our shared struggles and common bonds. When we think about building coalitions based on love for one another, I'm reminded of something our new mayor said on the campaign trail just a month or so ago. Actually, you tweeted it. Um, it was brilliant. You said, we don't build coalitions so we could feel good about ourselves and sing kumbaya. We build coalitions because it's the only way to get hard stuff done. We're not going to overcome hate by retreating to our corners. Coalition building is hard, messy work. It requires getting to know and care about a different set of perspectives and priorities from our own and to lift them up. But only by leaning into our collective power can we actively build a community based in based in love, trust, and compassion. And that's how we get big things done. And I can't wait to undertake that work with all of you. Thank you so much. Jody. Jody. Oh, I'd like to introduce my, my colleague, Hugo Soto Martinez. Thank you so much. Good morning and buenos dias. First of all, I want to thank uh, Rabbi Farkas for putting this together and all the community leaders and Rachel for emceeing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm new to city council. I also have notes, so I, I apologize in advance. Uh, you know, I come from the from the union movement, and in the union, we learn about about fighting together, building community, having solidarity, and always acting from a place of love. We deal with employers that oftentimes uh, we don't see eye to eye, but every single time we've always settled on something that was that was mutually beneficial. And I think that is is how I plan to lead here uh, as, as a new member of the city council. But I'll, I'll keep my comments brief. Uh, you know, Hanukkah celebrates the miracle of light, right? And that light is still, is, is, is with us. Uh, it is our love, is our compassion, our solidarity, our sense of community and shared goals that we have for the city. And that light shines with everyone here in this, in this press conference today. It shines with the mayor and my colleagues and I because that is what we need to drive out the hatred that is starting to, to grow and, and, and build in the city. And, you know, oftentimes when we fight, we have to blend, we have to blend a lot of love, but it's okay to feel righteous anger because when those two things come together, we can get a lot done. We need that urgency. We need, we need to be centering that love as well. But uh, I look forward to, to many more years of working with this community and many other communities. And uh, I'm here in solidarity for anyone uh, who, who needs my support. Thank you so much. Lighting the sixth candle, we will call upon LAUSD Board Vice President Nick Melvoin, joined by his fellow alumni of the Federation's Routenberg New Leaders Project. Appropriately, they are lighting candle number six for future generations.
Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. And I will welcome fellow NLP alumni up on the stage. I know there are a few of us. As they're gathering, I'll say, I've always thought that the real miracle of this time of year was that any event with this many elected officials is only like 15 minutes late. So mazel tov to our organizers. Thank you also, organizers, for this weather. Talk about China light. I'm quite overdressed. But uh, it's a privilege to be up here to represent the next generation vis-a-vis -vis the school district and also the new leaders project, these incredible still youngish leaders gathered behind me. I will be brief if for no other reason than I've spoken at about three Federation events in as many days and I'm just running out of things to say. Um, but as I was walking over here, I was thinking actually of the recent breakthrough a few days ago, we saw in nuclear fusion. Okay, here in California, public funding and California ingenuity, and yes, a few Jewish scientists came together and achieved an incredible breakthrough, something called ignition which is for the first time a reaction where the energy produced was greater than the energy consumed. The energy produced was greater than the energy consumed. And they will win a Nobel Prize and this will change our world. But I was thinking as I was walking over about what other areas of our world are so additive, where the output is greater than the input. One of those examples is actually lighting a candle. And as our clergy said so beautifully earlier today, when we use the shamash to light the other candles, it does not diminish the light of that first candle. It is seemingly inexhaustible as we light future candles. But the other area where outputs are greater than inputs are with education. And when we are working with the next generation, the energy we put in is less than the energy we get out. And whether we're in a classroom where a teacher will spark an idea that will catalyze the next great scientist, or just a caring adult on campus will tell a kid who's having a tough day or a tough year one little thing that changes their life. You know, our tradition teaches that to change one life is to change the world. The energy produced is greater than the energy consumed. A few years ago, I was speaking at a Black Family Empowerment Summit. It was put on by an organization called Village Nation. And its founder, a gentleman named Fluke Fluker, was there. And I asked Fluke, why did you, you know, what inspired you to create this organization? And he was saying that when he was a teacher, he was leaving school one day and he was going to his car and one of his students was skipping by and said, Mr. Fluker, where are you off to? And he said, oh, I'm actually off to my second job. He was a basketball coach in the evenings. And the student said, oh, well, that's funny. I'm actually off to my second school. And Mr. Fluker said, your second school, what do you mean? And he said, I'm off to Hebrew school. And Fluke said, oh, that's interesting. What do you learn there? And the student said very innocuously, nothing much, just how great my people are. And he started <laughs> skipping off. What a powerful statement. That student knows his identity. I think we have a new marketing campaign for Hebrew school. But Fluke started that so that kids in his community would have that same sense of identity. And when we build off strength and shared identity, that's truly how we shine a light. So when we light this sixth candle for the next generation, we do it knowing it doesn't diminish our light, but the energy produced is far greater than the energy consumed. Hag Sameach and Happy Hanukkah. Thank you all. Not sure if there's a photo, yeah. but if there's a photo, I'll continue. Well, okay, well, I guess I'm the center of the photo now. I am not an alumnus of this program. I yeah, showed up with full notes. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, what's that? <laughs> okay, great. I guess I've been recruited. Um, so anti-Semitism is not just a Jewish problem. Attacks against the Jewish community need to be seen as assaults on democratic, pluralistic society, on a democratic, pluralistic society. A threat to any minority group puts our whole country at risk. So lighting the seventh candle, symbolizing allyship and showing up for each other, we call upon Jumana Silyan Saba, Director of Policy and Discrimination Enforcement, Los Angeles Civil and Human Rights and Equity Department. Good morning. Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you to the Jewish Federation and all the organizers for bringing us together this morning. 
I am delighted to join you this morning to rejoice and to shine a light for only in the light that we can defy darkness. It is the love that lives in each of our hearts that beams through in the darkest of times to push against the narratives of hate. When we think we're all alone and all hope is gone, the miracle of friendship shows up with compassion, comfort, and courage. Time and time again, we all stood together. Jews, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Baha'is, to affirm the sacredness of our humanity and to raise our voices to uphold justice. So it is us standing together this morning, today, to affirm the sacredness of the humanity in each of us and to continue to raise our voices to uphold justice. That is what LA Civil Rights is all about. Showing up for each other, building bridges, and strengthening our communities. Only together as allies, friends, that we can continue to ensure that Los Angeles is for all. We light the seventh candle to shine a light on courageous allies, friends, partners, and as Mayor Bass would say, those who continue to lock arms and stand in solidarity for human rights and a world free of anti-Semitism and hate. Happy Hanukkah to all of you. Thank you. Uh, is everyone okay? That was really scary for me. That was actually horrifying. Um, I was really worried. Um, that was really scary. So, yeah. He's blaming the Jews for NFTs, apparently, because we're to blame for everything. I mean, thank God he wasn't armed. That was really scary. Like, I'm, that was very scary for me. Um, so let's secure the perimeter, I guess. Lighting the eighth candle, symbolizing hope, in the hope that won't happen again at this event, we call upon Chief Executive Officer Joanne Race with Fulfillment Fund joined by the leadership of the Jewish Federation Civic Partner Organizations, the Brotherhood Crusade Catalyst California, uh, Face Ola and Sola Ican. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Rachel, and thank you for helping us all stay grounded in what we're here to do today, and that is to create an incredible wave of solidarity, to be here for each other even in, when times are really tough. I have so much gratitude and admiration in my heart after seeing this incredible group of leaders, thought partners, and change agents come together for such an impactful message. I'm honored and grateful for this opportunity to be a part of this groundswell, and especially proud to be among my cohort of civ fellow civic partners who are with us today. In symbolically lighting the eighth candle of hope, I was asked to reflect on how we can harness hope to combat hatred and bigotry. I begin with unpacking how we describe hope. We sense it, we feel it, but often a definition eludes us. So what, what is hope? Hope is simply optimistic expectation, grounded in what we believe the world could and should look like. While we carry the flame of hope within each of us, when we combine this optimistic expectation, hope becomes a thread that ties a unique fabric of individuals together around shared values to make us a community. Hope helps us push away the negativity, carrying us through the darkest of times, but our shared hopes do more than just ward away the darkness. Sharing our hope helps us see our collective humanity and thus creates a foundation of understanding that unites us, builds bridges, sees differing perspectives, and respects diverse experiences. And seeing that each of us carries hope, we get to see each other as simply humans, and that is incredibly powerful. It's far more difficult to feel and express hate 
when the face you see on the other side becomes more than a stereotype or a competitor in what feels like a zero-sum game. When you realize that you have shared hopes, often rooted in surprisingly similar experiences and values, you begin to take down the walls that perpetuate hate and create better understanding to combat the ignorance that drives bigotry. You focus instead on your humanity. So I encourage us to begin conversations with others we have not yet taken the initiative to know and to center these conversations around hope. We often use hope to ignite dialogues with the young people that Fulfillment Fund is privileged to support in pursuing their dreams of providing a better life for themselves and their families through educational and career achievement. But these conversations with hope as a cornerstone really help our youth see beyond their challenges. And I very much encourage us to take a lesson from them and use hope to push beyond the boundaries of our differences and instead focus on our shared humanity. Thank you so much. I am, uh, I, I am calling upon perhaps Beth Keen or Emma. Okay, great. I'm, I think I'm next. Okay, please. Okay, it's okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, please just give a round of applause to our civic partners. We're so honored to have them here with us, working in partnership with our federation to combat systemic inequity and racism in their own communities. Hi, I'm Mary Kohav. I'm the Vice President of Justice, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion and Community Engagement at the Jewish Federation, and I'm a proud Iranian Jew. I want to quote the wise words of the Iranian poet who was quoted earlier on a different quote, Rumi, who said, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. We each have a part to play. With that in mind, I'd like to call upon Beth Keen with the Holocaust Museum of Los Angeles, joined by Jeff Abrams of the ADL, Rick Hirschout of the AJC, Dylan Hosier with the Israeli American Civic Action Network, Nancy Volpert from Jewish Family Service LA, Matthew Nuriel from Jimena, David Bo Karsley with the Jewish Public Affairs Committee, Serena Oberstein with Jewish World Watch, and uh, unfortunately our 30 years after representative couldn't be here, but thank you to all of these tremendous partners. Thank you, Rabbi Farkas and the Jewish Federation for bringing the community together to shine a light. I'm proud to speak on behalf of our amazing partners. Let's shine a light for our beloved Holocaust survivors. We lost another great one today, Sidonia Lacks. We have an obligation to make sure that their stories are never forgotten. Here are three ways we can shine a light on anti-Semitism. Educate yourself so you can recognize anti-Semitism, racism, and all forms of hate. Call out hatred. This takes bravery and leadership, but demands your actions. Show up for one another by being an ally against all forms of hate. 